so I'm currently working on an ice machine and uh, had to replace some electrical components that had gone bad, but when I switched it over to a freeze cycle and let it try to make ice, it took a really long time for it to make any ice, and uh, so I put the gauges on and began looking for a problem in the very complicated refrigeration circuit. This is the evaporator where it's making all the ice. This is the low side right here where it's going back to the compressor to get compressed. And then there's three capillary tubes. These are the small lines on the top. This line right here. And then there's this one that comes in right here. This one is from the hot gas valve, okay? So when this thing goes into a harvest cycle, it lets the hot gas come from the compressor right off the high side. So this right here is really hot. When it goes into a harvest, it lets it come into this line, past this solenoid valve, into the evaporator which melts all the ice that is stuck to the evaporator off and then it's actually able to harvest. Well, currently have it in a freeze cycle. It's still in a freeze cycle. This is the temperature of this line coming in. 107 degrees. This should not be warmer than the ambient temperature or even the temperature inside here. This should be cold. Also, you can hear that like whistling noise. That's the sound of really high pressure, superheated gas getting back into the low side. And that's happening because of this solenoid valve. Now, these solenoid valves, so if I feel this, on this side it's warm, on this side it's hotter. If it was uh, working all the way, we would expect a pretty big temperature differential across here. This might be a little bit warm just from heat wicking across, but by the time it gets up into the evaporator, it should not be 100 degrees. One thing that you want to make sure is that your coil is not energized, because when this coil comes on, it pulls that pin up. So we got a meter here. Let's just check for see what the coil voltage is and check, make sure you know what, what coil voltage you're dealing with. This one is a 208, 240. And we'll just check it on these two pins here. Just like that. Nothing. Now if you check from one to ground, you're gonna get 120 volts. Because since this is a 240 volt coil, it's going to have power on one leg still, and that's going to feed through the coil and back on the other one. So don't get fooled by that and think that the thing is running when it's really not, or the thing is on when it's really not. So we know that that's okay. Let's just for fun switch this thing into a harvest cycle, and then we'll watch what this temperature comes up to, because it might just be partially stuck it's just not like closing all the way so we're gonna go ahead and cycle this into a harvest that's a harvest so let's uh, make sure that we've got 240 volts here now Two hundred and fourteen. so this coil is energized now which means it's pulling that pin up so this is open 107 still. That feels just as warm as it did before. So this hot gas valve has definitely failed. And one other uh, note to have is if we try to put this thing into the off position, like that, it's going to de-energize this valve, because this is a pump down system, which is going to close that. And so now the system is pumping down. You can hear it sort of change sounds. And I think with this one, it wants to pump down until it gets to like 15 PSI on the low side. But you'll note that it 
never actually pumps down enough. It gets down to about 45, and then it just kind of meets an equilibrium. And we can still hear that loud hissing, because that's still gas coming by on the hot gas valve. See? 46. 213. We should expect to see this pumping down. So, you wouldn't want to diagnose the compressor as being bad if it's just your hot gas valve because it'll seem like the compressor uh, reads have gone bad when really it's just the hot gas bypass. So, yeah, lots of things to be paying attention in these ice machines. Yep, 45 still hasn't pumped down. This thing should have pumped down and shut off by now but it'll just run and run and run and run. Unfortunately, this thing will have to order and replace more parts. So what I replaced today already though, you can see this board is burnt. This, this connection from here to here just melted off the back of the board. And then the uh, timer and micro switch was also burning. And then I also put in a new cube size control because the way that this ice machine works is this cube size control has a temperature probe up in here. When that temperature gets down to, let's say, let's say it's supposed to get down to 17, then it would cycle the timer switch on, and then this switch would slowly rotate through the harvest cycle which would turn on the pump, the hot gas by the hot gas valve, and finish the harvest in this amount of time, which can be adjusted with this screw right here. And then it would hit another freeze cycle, so it would stop right here. This, this would be another freeze cycle. And then this would have to cool down again. So it's measuring the temperature on this line. And as soon as that temperature gets down to whatever we have this set to. In the example I said just now, it would be 17. So right at the beginning of the freeze cycle, it's going to be like 40 or 50 degrees. And so it's going to have to cool down all the water and make enough ice to the point where this gets down to 17. Then it'll switch into freeze, and this will slowly turn around in a circle as it finishes the freeze cycle. And then when it gets to there, boom back into harvest. Alright, so we just removed our previous um, solenoid valve. This is acting as the hot gas valve on this ice machine. And also have the new one here. I'm going to take off those caps. So, how this works is this coil right here, when it is energized, is supposed to lift up on a pin that's inside here and open the valve. Well, on this one, it failed open, so the pin pulled up and got stuck, and since it couldn't go back down, hot refrigerant was continually going from the high side of this unit into the evaporator, which is a big problem. So to confirm that this is actually a bad component after taking it out, one thing you can do is see if you can blow air through it. So I'm just going to do that. And I can blow air through it fine, which means it is open and bad. The new one, um, you don't actually want to blow through it because um, you don't want to get any moisture in there, but you can just very carefully like suck on it. Yeah, and I can't suck any air through it. So we know we've properly diagnosed and taken out the old solenoid valve. <sighs> and now we just got to put this in there and put everything back together and put the 21 pounds of refrigerant we recovered back into the unit and then we'll be done. It'll be so fun. Here's the unit uh, a couple weeks after we installed that part. After I installed that part I got it set so it would make ice properly. And you can see the part is working because this thing is full of ice. hasn't needed to make a batch of ice yet while I've been here. It's a pretty big hopper of ice. And they just have it set on partial, but it's working. Oh, and in case you're wondering what model I'm working on, I've got it written here. 
CME 102RE32A. 